So you went ahead and you bought a new washer and dryer. And yep. I see some new work here. Yeah, so we built this plywood wall. Um, we wanted to make this corner a little bit nicer since we'd be spending a lot of time down here. Nice work. You do this work? I did. Yeah. All right, super. So we got the power all set up. Now the plumbing is a different case. Um, we got estimates between two and twelve thousand dollars. Two to twelve. All right, I'll do it for six. No. <laughs> well, let me think about why there was such a variable. The dryer is straightforward. You got electricity. You got a vent. Looks like we can go right out here. With a washer, we need hot and cold water, and that looks pretty straightforward too. It looks like a hot and a cold pipe right here. We can come down the wall here. I think the variable is in the drainage. You know, any drainage system has to work by gravity. And look at this, the closest drain line is way up here. So I'm sure that was what the issue was. And even when it runs back this way, even where it leaves the building is way up high here. But I think I have a solution. And I think this is a project you and I could do today. You up for a little work? Yeah, let's All right, do it. Cool. All right, let's start right to left. We'll start with the dryer vent for the electric dryer. On the outside of the building, you'll see this. It has a little bird screen here and a flapper so that air only comes out, doesn't come back in. Now the question is, is where we can drill this through. Okay. Well, it's pretty straightforward. There's only one spot here. Here's, his looks like a balloon framing. So we're gonna go right here with a feeler bit. I'm gonna go right in the center of the opening. And hopefully that lines up pretty good. My God. Let's go find out. I just want to caulk around where the termination connects to the building, and then four screws will hold it tight. We connect the flexible metal dryer vent to the outside termination. I use a couple of zip screws for that. This fitting allows us to swivel it to any angle we want. If you swivel it to an elbow, it fits perfectly to the back of the dryer. We connect the dryer vent to the back of the dryer with a hose clamp. Now we just plug it in. All right, so dryer's all set? Yeah. Good, awesome. All right, so now we're gonna start thinking about how we're gonna get the water to leave the wash machine and get into our drainage system. Okay. This is a laundry sink, also called a laundry tray sink. You got a faucet right here. We're gonna have the discharge from the wash machine come right into here and water will go down through the bottom. Now historically, when we've ever had a basement laundry, or a basement bathroom where the drain was so high, we've only had one choice. We've had like a sewage ejector. It's almost a sump pump that goes below the floor. Water will come down from the drain into the sump. A float would come on, pump it out. But when you have that, you have to make sure both the sewage ejector and the fixture itself is connected into the house's vent system. Now in a retrofit like this, 70 years ago, it might, the only vent we're gonna find might be up in the attic and that might be why the plumbers had such a wide range of pricing. Look at this. This is a cool invention. Instead of having a trap underneath it, it's got a pump that sits right under the bottom of the sink. And when water comes into it, it'll come on right then. Now the water will discharge and go through this. This is a check valve. Now the water pushes out. The pump comes on, pushes this way. It lifts a flapper, lets the water go this way. But it doesn't let the water come this way. It doesn't let the sewer gas come this way. And even if there was a stoppage back here, it couldn't come back this way. So this is approved for this use. It's going to be a, so it's going to be a lot simpler for us to mount it where we want it to be, run the one-inch PVC up to here, and tie it in right here. Time okay. to put you to work. All right, I'm ready. I use a reciprocating saw to cut out a section of this old galvanized pipe. I replace that with a Y fitting and some PVC pipe. The PVC will attach to the old galvanize with these couplings, rubber on the inside and stainless steel on the outside. Now we can work on the water supply lines. I cut T's into the existing water lines, then I can run new copper lines to the washing machine valve. I apply flux to each joint and then bring in my torch. When the flux bubbles, I touch the solder to it, and the solder will melt and fill that joint, making a watertight connection. Now, why don't you attach the stainless steel hoses for the wash machine and the faucet supply? Give them a hand tighten, and then snug them up with a pair of pliers, okay? 
The drain line from the laundry sink will be made out of one inch PVC, which I connect to the PVC Y on the main drain line. All right, now we can move the wash machine into place and connect the supply hoses. All right, Alec, you getting excited? Yeah, this looks great. All right. Electric dryer is ready to go, vented to outside. Wash machine's here. We have a wash machine valve right here. This is really good to have. You know, this, when you're not using it, you turn it off. When you're using it, you turn it on right here. And that, that takes the pressure off the hoses when you're not here, okay? And now we got our copper water here. Here's our discharge into the sink. But I still have one more thing I got to do. This pump underneath is really powerful, crazy pumps. And so it could pump way faster than this faucet could fill. If I don't throttle down this ball valve on the discharge, the thing will be on and off, on and off. So I've got to turn this to full. You'll hear the pump come on. OK. You see how it's on and off? So now what I want to do is actually throttle it until it stays on. You see? So now, for as long as the faucet's on or the washing machine's filling, it'll stay on, but it won't cycle on and off. And it shuts off. You ready to go? You do the laundry? I do, yeah. Okay, I got stuff in the truck, all right? All right, go grab it. You were a great help, man.